Hi, we're going to begin looking at Python properly by starting with some arithmetic operations. Not the most uh, exciting flamboyant topic to start with, but they're really important as you move forwards. So I'd recommend as you watch this, either trying for different operations as I do it, so copying what I'm doing maybe in a different tab, you could split screen for video, or there'll be some questions at the end which I'd really recommend you try to make sure you have understood what's going on. And also make sure you've watched the first video which shows you how to install it and also talks about some of the basics. I'm going to be working through this on Replit. If you are doing it in idle, you just need to use your first shell screen like this and type the code here, press enter to run it, or in this case not run it. To make things a little bit clearer here, we're going to ignore the left hand side for the time being and just drag this across over here, if it will let me. And now we've got what is effectively what we would call the interactive interactive shell if it was in idle. So you can see here I've got this this white box is my cursor effectively. If I press enter a few times the cursor follows down. And on the left hand side we have a prompt which is sort of an orangey rusty colour and that's showing us where we can write our code. You'll notice if you try and type above your cursor it won't let you because that line has effectively been run by the computer or Replit's computer already. So we can't go back, we've already run back code. In this case we didn't write any code so it didn't do much if anything. So now um, we're going to talk about some operations and first of all let's talk about some numeric operations, so operations which work on numbers. We've got the four basic ones, so addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. So let's start with addition which is <laughs> exactly the same as it would be if you were doing it on paper. At its core really Python is just a big calculator. So 5 plus 6 is 11, works normally. Subtraction is the same, it would be the equivalent of a hyphen, so 5 minus 4 is 1, it works normally. Also we can use in Python negative numbers, so if I do something like 5 plus minus 6, I should get minus 1, which works. In a similar sense, if I do 10 minus minus 5, I should get 15, because uh, a minusing and minus number adds it. So it works pretty much normally. Multiplication is different only in the sense the symbol is different. We can't use an X or an X-like symbol because that's a letter. So instead we use an asterisk in Python. So something like 5 asterisk or star uh, 10, it gives us 50. Works normally again, same idea with negative numbers. 5 times minus 10 this time should be minus 50. It works as you'd expect. If you type something a bit wrong, if you do something like 10, I don't know, times D, by mistake, press enter, you'll get an error message. Now, these you'll see a lot of, you'll become very familiar with them. If you don't become familiar with them, that's a, a worry because everyone does. Some people get a little bit um, concerned getting errors, which I guess because in other subjects, if you get stuff wrong, an error feels like getting something wrong, but actually it's very, very normal um, in programming. You'll see it all the time, even if you are an experienced programmer. Really, programming is all about fixing errors. And because we're doing it in this mode, in this interactive mode, and we're doing it line by line, so I type in line, press enter, it runs. Having an error here is fine. We're just playing around at the moment. If we were doing proper programs, we'd do it inside the script mode, which is over here. We're just doing it. We're just messing around here. So if I go down and look at the next operation, in fact let's talk about other, so we're missing division here actually, let's do division. So division is with a forward slash, so if I do something like 81 slash 9, should be 9. You'll notice here we get 9.0 as our output, the output comes below this prompt by the way. Um, you'll notice we've got 9.0 here, and if you look up at the top we are not getting 1.0, 11.0, 15.0, it's only happening once we're doing division. And that's just how Python's developers decided to implement division. We have different data types, and so the two main numeric data types in Python are integers and floats. Integers are whole numbers, so 11 is an integer, whereas 9.0 is a float, also called a real, because we have that dot zero. If we got rid of the dot zero, if it was just nine, that would be an integer, but 9.0 is a float. And those are two types, two examples of data types. There are many more in Python. And we have got to be a bit careful sometimes with data types. They can cause some issues. But thankfully, Python has built-in ways to convert between different data types. If you were really concerned about that, having a dot zero after your division, you could do something like 81 uh, two slashes, 
2 forward slash is 9. This is floor division, so it gets rid of any decimal point effectively. To show you a better example, perhaps, if I do maybe 25 floor division or inch division uh, 2, should give us 12.5 even, press enter. I get 12, it's getting rid of the 0.5 at the end. This is really, really useful, but perhaps more useful even is mod. So mod in Python is for percent sign. So if I do here instead 25% or mod 2, which stands for modulus, instead of 12, I'll get the remainder, which was left over. So if I do, so 12 goes into 25 two whole times. 2 times 12 is 24, and we have one left over, which is the one returned from modular division. And modular division is really, really valuable, especially in computer science. It crops up all the time, especially dividing by two, because we're doing it in binary, and that's just how usually various things work in, say, encryption, also in parallel programming. Mod is used really often. Lots of different algorithms, modular division is used. So we have the double forward slashes is instant division, also called div, and the percent sign is modular division, also called mod. After this, the main operation I have forgotten about is where we want to have a, a power. So something like 2 squared, we could do, well, 2, two squared is a bad example. Let's do 2 to the power 4. I could do 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which will give me 16 if I run that line by pressing Enter. That's fine, but that's not great if we're doing massive powers. Again, if you're doing something like encryption, you're dealing with huge powers, you don't want to do it like that. It's much better to shorten it like we would in maths, just write 2 than a little superscript of 4. So instead we use in Python two asterisks next to each other, 2 to power 4 is written like that, I press enter and I get 16 that way. There are a few different words for what 4 is, you might have heard about it as an indice, also an exponent, you might say 2 to the power 4 is how you pronounce it if you were saying it, and this whole process of raising one number to a power is called exponentiation. One of the final things to show for this is how normal mathematical rules also apply. So you may have heard of bod mass or bid mass, which is the order of operations, which is the same in Python as it is in normal maths. So you have your brackets are evaluated first, then your order or indice or exponent, whatever you want to call it, your division, then your multiplication, addition and subtraction finally. So bod mass or bid mass. So similar, let's just do something like, if I do something like 3 plus 2 plus 1 times 2, should give us 12, which it does, because according to bod mass, we are evaluating our bracket before we are doing um, times in by two. If I get rid of that bracket and do just three plus two plus one times two, because we are now evaluating multiplication before we are doing addition, we are effectively doing three plus two plus two, because one times two is two. So this time we should get seven, which we do. So again, the rules do track into Python. You have got to be a bit careful. You can't just suddenly relax your mathematics because you're in Python. It is it is the same thing, even if the symbols are a bit different sometimes. Okay, now I've shown you each of the operations and you may have tried it yourself. I'd really recommend you pause it, especially if you haven't tried it yet, and think about eight examples here. First of all, in your head or using some paper, go through each one and try and figure out what Python, based on what we've just looked at, will evaluate from to. Evaluate means carry them out. So what would Python do if you typed in each one and pressed enter, what would be the output shown below? And then also, once you've decided for yourself, actually go into Python and try them to see if you were correct. Not that important if you're not correct, but trying to figure out why Python is giving the answer it is.